In this lesson, we'll learn a bit more about documents, buckets, and Couchbase tooling to finish setting up your learning environment. At base, Couchbase stores key-value pairs. Those pairs could have a somewhat complex key, like a date timestamp, associated with a simple string value, like a temperature reading. Or the pair could use some arbitrary but unique value as a key, associated with a longer text document in a useful format, such as JSON. As a result, the key to a stored document is commonly called its document ID, and can be any string value up to 250 bytes, or about 250 characters. The value can be anything up to 20 megabytes, which would be anything from 5 to 20,000 characters or so, depending on the byte length of the character set in use. So data buckets are logical containers of uniquely keyed documents. You could think of them as a key space and possibly as a database, though their use patterns are driven by different concerns than a traditional RDBMS database and its entities. Going further, you could think of a set of logically related documents in a bucket as somewhat equivalent to a table. These documents may have the same pattern or relate to the same application or relate to an entity used consistently across multiple applications. But there is no schema being enforced by Couchbase. Couchbase quite intentionally offers the flexibility to continually evolve the shape of your documents, while providing nickel language elements that allow you to respond to varying document shapes. Which of course leads to a question. Why would you ever have more than one bucket? Well, buckets allow you to isolate data based on varying caching, replication, and indexing needs, as well as to support multi-tenancy within your system. If you'd like to learn more right away about how data modeling works in JSON, take our free online course, CB105. Now, adding a bucket is easy. Click Add Bucket, then specify the name and the per-node memory quota. Specify the type, whether that is a persisted couch-based bucket, a non-persisted, purely in-memory ephemeral bucket, or a more limited cache, memcached style. Then you'll set your replica count up to three, remembering that replicas never reside on the same node as their active document, so you must have as many or more nodes in your cluster as your chosen replica count. Couchbase will let you know if you don't. Then you can choose your XDCR conflict resolution method. You'll choose whether or not you want not recently used documents fully ejected from memory or if their key and metadata should remain. You can choose whether this bucket should have higher priority relative to other buckets in the cluster. And if you wish, you could choose bucket-specific compaction settings overriding the cluster-wide defaults. Last, you can choose to allow data in this bucket to be purged or flushed, which is useful during development, but likely a bad idea in a production system. Now, the basics of setting up a user are straightforward. On the security screen, add a user and assign a username, password, and one or more security roles. Now, in this course, we take a simple approach and create a bucket specific user account with full access to the bucket. More granular, and network integrated approaches are possible, but they're beyond the scope of this course. Couchbase Enterprise Edition includes a powerful new tool, CB Import, which is used for bulk loading data into buckets. Data can be loaded from external JSON or CSV formatted files in a variety of different formats for each. Now, very helpfully, this tool lets you define document ID generation patterns based on data extracted from each document. You'll work with this in the lab. Also, very helpfully, CB import is wicked fast. Now, in lab two, you'll configure and load your bucket, then preview the final lab application just to verify you've got everything set up correctly. As always, remember you can follow detailed steps in the workbook or just read the objectives and freestyle it, whichever way works best for you. In the next lesson, we'll begin surveying the Couchbase API and take you through connecting to your cluster and opening a bucket. Come on back. There's more to come.